Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're diving into the final phase of the Overdrive initiative. But since this is about as straightforward as missions come in SC, we're pretty much going to speedrun that section and then use the rest of the vid as a bit of a review of the mission series overall. So if this sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, then let's get into it. Front and centre, I'd like to put out a bit of a correction to my last vid, as I referred to the SPK mission as Phase 5, while the devs are calling it Phase 4A. It's kinda semantics, but I don't want anyone getting confused and missing rewards thinking that they completed it all. This is Phase 5, and you will need to do everything to get your armor set and your F7A Mark II upgrade token. I don't think anyone's gonna get too confused by this, but it does make sense to just iron it out at the start. For anyone who's missed things up until now, the Overdrive Initiative is a mission chain that covers a range of gameplay loops. It lays the ground narratively for the main Xeno Threat Dynamic event, which should be showing up alongside Invictus launch week in May. For the most part, you need to complete each phase sequentially. But don't worry if you've not done any or you haven't completed the full thing, since you'll have a good few weeks yet to get it all done and qualify for the rewards, which as mentioned now include a medium Xeno Threat armor set, as well as an upgrade token from the F7C Mark II to the military grade F7A Mark II. So first up, let's take a quick look at Phase 5, Supply Request. And as I mentioned in the intro, this isn't a particularly complex mission, so it's going to be a fairly quick run through. In terms of narrative, after the successful repulsion of the attack on SPK, the CDF higher-ups have got the sense that Xenothreat are preparing for a full-blown attack, so we're tasked with recovering supplies and getting them over to the Stanton Pyro Jumpgate Station. As with all the other missions, you'll find this in the Priority tab of your Moby Glass, but you're probably best off, for the time being at least, hitting left bracket when you see it pop up as competition for the mission is a bit fierce. You can solo this mission comfortably, but given its relative scarcity it might help to share it out and do it as a group. The mission can send you to a variety of locations all over Stanton, and you might find bad guys there, so it helps to come in a ship that can cover distance and handle a bit of combat. You'll also need some interior space for the boxes you'll need to recover. I'm going to be using my trusty Cutlass Black, but Vanguards, Connies, Corsairs, Freelancers, Spirits, etc. would all do the job. Just don't come in a single seat fighter like an Arrow or a Gladius if you're doing this on your own. When I arrived at the wreck, there were a few bad guys to take out, the biggest of which was this Reclaimer. So you might find puncher enemies out there, you know, I was able to sit neatly in this blind spot. If something like a Hammerhead had spawned, then my Cutty might not have been up to the task. The rest of the enemies, though, were just Cutty Blacks, which were easily dealt with. And there is every chance, since these wreck sites do spawn bounties, that I just crossed over with somebody's ERT. Once the sky is clear, head down to the site and locate the boxes. You can pick these up in your hands, but bringing a tractor beam with you is going to make life many times easier. Then load the three boxes up and head for the Pyro Stanton Jump Gate Station. Once landed, you'll need to take the boxes to a Kovalex drop off point, and since we're in a station, we can't use the tractor beam anymore. I was just a bit reticent to try and move all the boxes together by shuttling them between elevators, just in case someone decided to mess with me by picking one up and throwing it away so I did have to go from ship to drop off point three times. This is another point where to be honest, it would have been nice to do this as part of a crew. Many hands make light work after all. Just keep in mind that the drop off point can change between boxes, so you might have to go to either the cargo deck or the galleria to deposit your parcel. I was a bit worried when I made my third drop off that the mission had bugged or the uh, Kovalex point had bugged, but actually it was just I had to head to the other one. This mission only has one stage, so once you've made your three deliveries, that's you done. Overdrive complete. So like I said, Phase 5 wasn't particularly involved, so I want to take the time with the rest of this video to have a bit of a debrief about the ODI event in general, because there were things I thought were awesome, and things that I thought could be improved upon. 
Really conveniently, this Thursday's Inside Star Citizen was effectively the same thing with the developers, so I kind of wanted to mirror that, but from a player's perspective. Obviously, nothing I say is meant to disrespect any of the work put in by the devs, and so I do want to kick off with things which I thought were really good. In ISC, Elliot mentioned that CIG needed to do things which improved engagement and got people playing together, and as somebody who runs a sizeable SC community, which all are welcome to join via the link in the video description by the way, I can say that this was a fundamental success. The majority of the missions drove a lot of excitement, and in many cases got people looking for groups to work on this content with. We've had something of a surge of new joiners, including brand new players, but also grizzled veterans for whom this was finally the push they needed to get involved with other players. Considering the fun you can have in SC as part of a group is, to my mind, a conservative 10x what you can have on your own, this is fantastic, and I'd really love to see this sort of thinking continue at CIG. And it wasn't just evident in off-platform Discord communities like ours, I also witnessed lots of global chat messages flying around as people organised quick pickup groups with other players to get the job done. So I don't think anyone can really say that this sort of thing excludes solo players. It's not like it's a level of challenge that you have to be part of a slick, well-oiled organisation to, to accomplish. You do just have to maybe get involved with other people. Some of the missions are also definitely worth highlighting as personal favourites. Phase 1, in which we attacked hostile bunkers and held the server room, was a great balance of FPS combat and mild puzzle solving. And in this one, I really enjoyed the scaling up of the difficulty, with less time and more things going wrong, making for a slightly more frantic feeling as you progressed. Phase 3's miniature fleet battles were also amazing. I love the Xenothreat dynamic event for the feeling you get of being thrown into a massive fleet battle, and these were like a little taster session of that. I also really relished the opportunity to take my full ballistic hammerhead out for a spin, and I really just wish that maybe some more advanced combat beacons came out more like this in the future. I did also enjoy Phase 4's comlink missions, particularly when things really kicked off and you got pressed by a lot of opposition and counter-hacking vanguards, but really the crowning moment for the chain was Phase 4A at SPK. I've been lucky enough to play through this mission quite a lot with various members of my org and the community, and if you have a go on it on a high frame server with NPCs really popping, then you get a fantastic feel for the new AI and how active it is. Just make sure that you bring enough ammunition and med pens. My mother was a teacher, so certain things do stick with me, and one of them is not saying that things are straight up bad. So I guess instead we're going to go with needs improvement. The stuff which could maybe do with being looked at again if the event's going to be rerun. Phase 2 was a little bit meh. The mission was honestly more quantum travel than anything, and the fights were on a par with MRTs for the most part, then an ERT at the top end. The devs acknowledged that the AI was a bit of a letdown on this one, and maybe the fight should have been a bit more challenging, and I could definitely have gone for something a bit harder, particularly with the travel involved. There also wasn't much logic to where you had to take the crypto key to when you were done. I mentioned it as a bugbear in my vid on that phase, but in one instance we had a mission in Crusader, then a drop off 70 million kilometres away at the Terra Jump Gate, then we had to refuel and turn around to head straight back to Crusader for our next mission. It was somewhat less than thrilling, but I did manage to get some nice b-roll of our redeemers doing a linked quantum jump, so I wasn't entirely disappointed. And phase 5 was similarly a little bit underwhelming, particularly coming at the end of the chain and coming off the back of the fantastic Phase 4A carrier mission. Now in ISC, Elliot was really clear that this was purposeful, and that in game design theory, you're not meant to throw non-stop action at players, and you ideally want to have peaks and lulls. Obviously, I don't have a degree in game design, but I personally do find this a bit of a hard sell, and I think the Helldivers 2 devs might like to have a word. Overall, outside of the phases themselves, I think it's also worth flagging the mixed experience depending on the state of the server and AI, when functioning perfectly as intended, the combat sections of the missions are excellent, and in some cases a bit overwhelming but in a good way. But other missions were plagued by performance issues that made NPCs dead on arrival, as they just stumbled around in spawn closets without responding to you. And this is obviously part of the ongoing mission to improve server performance more generally, but if we're going to debrief then it's got to be mentioned. And finally for me it's the narrative angle, which could just as easily belong in the good pile because it was really great to see a mission chain like this with such variety that was all linked together by a decent story. 
but the reason I'd put it under the needs improvement is that this wasn't really pushed into players' faces enough. The addition of some voice lines to help tell the story would be a massive improvement, and really cement this as the build-up to Xenothreat. But realistically, the devs are probably more worried about making sure the missions themselves and the chain overall feels right, before they invest the resources in additional polish like this. And finally, we've got just one entry that can be potentially labelled as the ugly, and that's the rewards side of things. Now I've got to jump in quickly and state that CIG have already changed course on this, which I'm really happy about, and also that my personal opinion about ship buying is that we're all adults who are free to make our own choices. However, I do think CIG should smarten up a bit and not make the mistake in the first place of making everything about a ship sale. In combination with a small in-game reward to incentivize playtesting of this new mission series, running a ship promotion is absolutely fine, but making the only real reward something that you can only get any value out of by buying a ship for hard currency is bound to leave a bad taste and maybe just take away from the event itself. Now to be fair, I think there is plenty of longer term potential here when it comes to ship purchasing because I think mission chains like this one could filter into the rep system and represent a gate on you buying a certain ship in-game. This is just complicated right now because the F7C Mark II and F7A military version aren't available in in-game stores, but in the future they should be, and maybe at that time anyone can buy the Civi version from New Deal, but only people with sufficient rep made with the CDF by completing missions like these ones for example will be able to buy the military spec vehicle. But there we have it for Phase 5 and our Overdrive Initiative debrief. If you enjoyed the vid and think I've earned it, then I would of course massively appreciate it if you dropped a like and hit subscribe. And do let me know your thoughts down in the comments as well, they're always a good read. In the near future, real life permitting, I am intending to use one of my alts to run the full mission chain back to back as a stream, so do stay tuned for that. And remember that if you haven't done these missions already, you've still got a fair bit of time. If you need any help, don't hesitate to pop into our Discord. You know, these missions can be shared with people who've already completed them, so they can always lend a hand. I think it's really important that we all provide feedback where we can, because Star is quite a unique game in that we get to have a real influence over its direction. And I've got to come full circle and end on a high note. Because the ODI undoubtedly delivered on a lot of the objectives the team set for themselves when they made it. The mission chain has driven a lot of engagement and pushed players together, and to want to work in groups in a way that I haven't really seen very much in the game until now. Certain missions like Xenothreat, Siege of Orison, Jump Town, they've already provided rewarding experiences for groups of players, as have some of the changes to other aspects of the game like mining and salvage, but for the most part they haven't really required team working in the same way as some of the ODI missions have. And the release of these new missions every Friday has brought a lot of players out of hibernation. You know, they're logging in each week to check what the new mission is and complete it with their mates. I'm also really hyped for the revamped Xenothreat Dynamic event, particularly with the teaser that the Idris will, using the systems developed for the Capture the Idris mission, be boardable. Thanks to the help of members of the Frontier community, I was personally lucky enough to win an Idris M in the competition with a video I made. But due to family stuff and the sheer rarity of the mission spawn, I didn't actually have a chance to set foot on one at the time. So I'm really looking forward to this now, for sure. But with all that said, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.